Hi, this is Translatory Lab number 10, Bungaku Honyaku Labo Dai Juban, and I'm JD Wisco from selftaughtjapanese.com. Alright, for those of you who are new to this series, Translatory Lab is about taking a short Japanese fiction passage and translating it uh, into English and showing the steps uh, for translation, some of the research. And uh, the goal is to not necessarily produce a perfect result, but to show more of the process. If you want to see more information, please see um, some of the earlier uh, episodes, particularly number one. This time we're going to continue from the previous episode, number, sign, uh, number nine, and uh, do uh, Akita Kaido uh, from Miyazawa Kenji. Okay, hajimarizo. All right, so last time we did a pretty long episode, it was about 45 minutes, um, where we went over the translation. Um, and we got it to a certain point, and then when I went back and I read it, I realized there's definitely a, a bunch of issues, uh, so I wanted to have another episode, maybe a little bit shorter, um, where I kind of clean this up. So what I want to do is go through these one more time, and uh, I think roughly we're matching the, the original text, but I want to go for more um, looking for errors and cleaning up the English. All right, each of the houses were lonely places that did exchange in fertilizer, firewood, and charcoal. Now. When I went through this again, I was like, did exchange? This just sounds odd. Um, that dealt in <coughs> fertilizer, firewood, and charcoal. So this is sort of a more of a, a shorter, more natural way to phrase this. Um, and the dealt in, I mean, it kind of implies trading, right? The, the yaritori exchange. Um, so I think this is a much better uh, phrase to use. Um, let's move on. The black, tiny, lonely houses were scattered here and there along the highway. And I think this is pretty good. Um, the black tiny. Now, I like the order better. The small <coughs> black lonely houses were scattered here and there along the highway. Okay, I think this is pretty good. Um, we'll read it one more time at the end, though. Furthermore, each of these houses, each of the houses, had their doors closed. Okay, um, had their doors closed. We could try to simplify, get rid of the verb tense uh, with this hat here. Furthermore. <coughs> The door of each house uh, was closed. This is another way to phrase it. Each of the houses. So we already said each of the houses up here. I don't want to necessarily repeat that. Each of the houses had the doors closed. The door of each house was closed. All right, I like this a little better. Okay, so I turned back dejectedly the way I had come. So when I read this again, um, I realized that this sounds like the person's kind of turning around to kind of return. Um, but this is actually turned to look back, right? Furika eru, it says heru, but it's eru. I turn to look back, and if we want to double check, um, we can just do furika eru. Yeah, it's generally looking back, not necessarily to physically, like, you know, plan on going back, you're just looking. Uh, I turn to look back dejectedly the way I come. Yeah, it definitely sounds weird with dejectedly, though. I turn to look back, um, Dejectedly, the way I'd come. Hmm. I turn to look back dejectedly. All right, we may come back to that. The the, the dejectedly is sounding a little strange now. Um, I turn to look back. Yeah, maybe I'll I'll feel different on the next reading. Um, it, it feels a little, little catch here, a little uh, unnaturalness. And then this was the most uh, difficult sentence, I guess, of the of the set that uh the excerpt that I chose. The sleepy row of lights of Morioka waver faintly in the wind, but from a high place the arc lights in the park produce visible ripples of flame. So it's it's getting there, but um, one thing I noticed is <clears throat> we have past tense, you know, uh, basically dealt, were, um, were, we have a lot of past tense, turned, everything's past tense, but this is a suddenly present tense. So to keep it consistent, I'll use this, the sleepy row of lights. Um, uh, now, of Morioka sounds a little strange. Um, how about, let's just say, in Morioka. <coughs> let's try this. It's a slightly different meaning, but I think it sounds a little better. In Morioka, the sleepy row of lights wavered faintly in the wind. It just it feels better to me. Um, but from a high place, the arc lights in the park produce. So, yeah, now that looking at this again, and I mentioned it last time, but um, the tada here is sort of a contrast between these lights, which are faintly wavering, right? Um, and then this arc light in the park, which is basically, it's a, it's a big dramatic, you know, ri visible ripple of flame. 
<coughs> at least in my interpretation. So what I want to do is try another option here. Morioka, the sleepy row of lights wavered faintly in the wind. Um, and let me just try a semicolon, which I like to do once in a while. <coughs> it was only the arc lights in the park that um, produced visible ripples of flame from their high location. I don't know if I need a comma here, but uh, arc lights in the park. And let's get rid of the comma. So let's read this again. In Morioka, the sleepy row of lights wavered faintly in the wind. Yeah, now that I'm looking at this, the in Morioka, I want to put it back to where it was. Um, the sleepy row of lights in Morioka. Yeah, it just sounds better. Wavered faintly in the wind. It was only the arc lights in the park that produced visible ripples of flame from their high location. All right, I think it's a little bit better. Um, and this, from a high place, this just sounds a little weird. Actually, let's try. High location all sounds a little stiff. From high up. How about that? And I don't know how high, but I assume it's it's obviously significantly higher than. <clears throat> Other locations. Um, it was only the arc lights in the park that produced visible ripples of flame from high up. So the visible ripples of flame thing, there's probably still ways to um, clean that up. And we had a lot of discussion about Kien, how it's kind of uh, something high spirited, something dramatic. Um, and I was kind of interpreting this sort of as is visible. Um, you could also say noticeable. <coughs> um, you could say showy. Uh, showy ripples, dramatic. I kind of like dramatic actually, because <clears throat> to me that that kind of captures the feeling of the key in, which is like something very vigorous, you know, high spirit. It's moving around quickly. Um, ripples of flame, and again, this is literally waves, um, which we talked about last time. But I like the ripples here. Um, you can say waves of flame, but that's that just sounds odd. I mean, if you're not sure, you can always do something like waves of flame. Right. Yeah, I mean, you get some hits potentially that waves of flame. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's okay to talk about waves of flame sometimes. But waves of flame. Yeah, that just sounds weird to me. <clears throat> I like ripples of flame from high up. And then the last part here, uh, it must have been that a bunch of reckless leaf beetles were, I'm going to get rid of now, were clustered together inside the lights crawling all over one another. So here, uh, thinking about this again, I think, first of all, inside the lights doesn't make sense. Um, on the lights makes more sense because they're not actually inside. Um, you can just say around maybe because they're they're flying, right? They're, they're assuming they have wings. Um, and if we're not sure, I mean, they the first character is wing here, so they probably have wings. <coughs> but if you want to check, um, we have... Let's see, pictures, and I guess I don't need the English. Um, we get, yeah, they obviously have wings, so they're flying, right? So that's that's important. Um, so they're clustering around. They're not necessarily stuck to it. They, they could be climbing on. They could be f kind of buzzing around it. Um, we're clustered together around the lights, and it's crawling all over one, or one another. I like the image here, but um, again, it's a little bit different here. <clears throat> So let's try to make this a little close to the, uh, a little bit closer to the Japanese, the original uh, te text here. Um, let's see, bumping and yorokeru, if I remember, was like a, I forget what the best translation for that was. Yorokeru, stumble, stagger. So they're kind of like moving irregularly. I mean the, this definition here, imanimo taori soni. It doesn't really fit literally, um, but the way I interpret this is it's kind of like a intermittent, uh, like kind of jerking back and forth, bumping into each other, um, you could say haphazardly. So what does haphazardly really mean? Um, I just want to make sure I understand the word. Sometimes I need to check English words. So yeah, I like haphazardly. <clears throat> it's kind of a, there's like a randomness to it. Which to me, it kind of connects to this yorokeru verb of like a staggering. Haphazardly. <clears throat> okay, I like that better and I think it's, it's closer to the original text. So for a final run through, 
Um, I'm just going to take these. So basically, if you remember, there's two paragraphs. Um, and then, and I'll show you in just a moment. There's actually, I'm going to pick the second one because I definitely like it much better. <clears throat> the one where I injected a semicolon um, just to kind of connect things. All right, so just to show the original text and the formatting, um, this is actually sort of a separate section because there's a paragraph, or it's not, it's not even really a paragraph, it's a section break here. Right? These are two paragraphs, but there's a section break. So it's kind of has this sort of formatting, which is interesting. So this is supposed to be um, an end of a section, so just keep that in mind when we're reading it. All right, so let me go ahead and read this, and I'll give it a title. Um, so we talked about how Kaido, Kai, sorry, Kaido was highway, right? So we can just say Akita Highway by um, Kenji Miyazawa. Miyazawa. Did I get that right? Yeah. The highway. And I noticed there was another typo here where it should be were. Um, were. Okay. Let's go ahead and read this one more time and see how it sounds. Each of the houses were lonely places that dealt in fertilizer, firewood, and charcoal. The small, black, lonely houses were scattered here and there along the highway. Furthermore, the door of each house was closed. I turned to look back dejectedly the way I had come. The sleepy row of lights in Morioka wavered faintly in the wind. It was only the arc lights in the park that produced dramatic ripples of flame from high up. It must have been that a bunch of reckless leaf beetles were clustered together around the lights, bumping into each other haphazardly. Okay, so it's, it's definitely getting there. Um, <clears throat> wanted to double check the beginning. Nothing that was really jumping out, but there was a few, each of the houses were lonely places. I felt like the beginning kind of started suddenly and maybe it could be worded a little bit differently. Each of the houses were lonely places. Um, so here it's Doremo. Yeah, but I mean, it, it does kind of start suddenly. Um, there were the only places that dealt in furniture. Uh, okay. The small black lonely houses were scattered here and there along the highway. Furthermore, the door of each house was closed. Okay. And then I turned to look back dejectedly. The, de the dejectedly didn't sound that bad to me. It, I kind of had some uh, concern before about the naturalness, but now that I'm reading it in you know context here, it... It actually sounds pretty good. Um, there's clearly different ways to word it, but um, I think it's okay. The sleepy row of lights in Morioka wavered faintly in the wind. It's only the arc lights in the park um, that produced dramatic ripples of flame from high up. So the arc lights, if you saw in the previous episode, uh, I'm not sure if this is a common phrase. I'm not even sure. I mean, it is in the dictionary. Um, and actually, lamp, now that I'm reading this, I think I like lamp better. Uh, it just has a better feeling to it that produced dramatic ripples of flame from high up. Um, okay, it must have been. Now we we have two sentences to start with it. We got to be careful. We don't have this too, this wordiness here, but it must have been that a bunch of reckless leaf beetles were clustered together around the lights, bumping into each other haphazardly. So, um, and the reason I read this through again is sometimes when I'm reading, um, you know, in, as a narration, I. I'm not able to think about it as clearly, so sometimes I need to just stop and, and actually just go sentence by sentence again, um, a little bit slower than as opposed to like narrating. Uh, so here, yeah, this it must have been. I mean, the, it must have been part is not really directly implied here. This is more factual explaining, um, as I mentioned last time. It must have been. I could let's try this. A bunch of reckless um, were clustered around a together a bunch of reckless leaf beetles were clustered around clustered together around the lights pumping each other haphazardly so I mean the thing about this must have been to me this has an explanatory feel I mean it's not literally the same thing but it kind of explains um, you know maybe the way that the like I said the, the flame is or the the appearance of the lights so I'm going to put that back in because I, I think it fits better. Um, and it, it doesn't sound bad. It's just the it's are two sentences in a row. So we could probably clean it up. But it must have been that a bunch of reckless leaf beetles were clustered together 
or on the lights, pumping into each other haphazardly. All right, I think that came out pretty well. Um, after all, uh, we had some of the issues that we cleaned up, and here's a typo here or two. But yeah, I think it turned out pretty well. So just to finish, um, as usual, I sometimes mention some of my books. I got a bilingual book of fairy tales by uh, Ogao Mime. Um, and it's relatively easy difficulty level and I have parallel Japanese and English um, so there's just a few short fairy tales um, in this book and I think it's a good way to practice reading Japanese literature so please consider taking a look um, you can see the YouTube video description below uh, for more details and thank you for watching